Hi Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 2.07 ions. Have your notes, periodic table, and the board drawings that we did from 2.06 ready. So far we have said atoms are neutral. This means the amount of positive charges equals the amount of what kind of charges? The negative charges. Atoms are neutral when the number of what equals the number of what? Atoms are neutral when the number of protons equals the number of electrons. In numerical terms, we would say the charge equals how much? Zero. Now, this slide should all be a review. If there is anything in there that you were like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to know that, please add it to your notes right now. If you could very quickly answer all of these blanks and you know this, then that's fine. You don't need to write it down. You already know it. While being neutral is a good starting point, atoms want to be stable. In order to be stable, the outermost orbital needs to be full of what? It needs to be full of electrons. And just as a reminder, the first orbital can hold how many maximum, how many total electrons? Two total electrons. And all other orbitals that we will be drawing can hold a maximum of how many electrons? Eight electrons. So look at your Bohr diagrams. Which elements are already stable and neutral? Okay, so they, their outermost orbital is already full of electrons. In other words, which elements have a full outer shell? Now the word shell and orbitals are interchangeable. So sometimes we say orbitals, sometimes we say shell. It's the same thing. So look at the Bohr diagrams that you did. And which one, which group has a full outer shell? So hit pause if you need to. The answer is group eight. Group eight, all of them have full outer shells. By the way, group eight is called noble gases. So think about in history class when you learned about the nobles. They were very rich. They were too good to deal with those peasant atoms down below, right? They didn't interact. Well, Group eight elements are noble gases. They too are too good to interact with all the peasant atoms. And they really don't interact because they already have full outer shells. Stop, very important. This is one of the five most important vocabulary words all year, valence electrons. So valence electrons are electrons in the outermost orbital or shell. So right here, we said noble gases have a full outer shell. We look at the outermost electrons, and those are really called valence electrons. Make sure you write this down. If you didn't, you should also write down that group eight is called the noble gases. They are too good to interact with the other peasant atoms because they have a full outer shell and are stable. So let's add that down to the bottom. Because they have a full outer shell and are stable. So make sure you have that added to your notes as well. Valence electrons, electrons in the outermost orbital. Let's look at all of the groups that we did so far. So group one, every single element in group one has how many valence electrons? They each have one electron in the outermost orbital or shell. They have different amounts of orbitals and shells, but the outside one always has one valence electron. Group two always has one, two valence electrons. Group three always has how many valence electrons? Three. Group four has four what electrons? Four valence or outermost electrons. Group five has five valence electrons. Group six has what? Six valence electrons. Group seven, fluorine, chlorine, all the way down, has how many valence electrons? Seven. And group eight has a full outer shell, except you might have noticed something. These have eight, but wait a minute. Look at helium. Helium only has two valence electrons. Why is it over here instead of in group two, like all the other ones with two valence electrons? Helium is special because it only needs blank valence electrons for a full outer shell. It only has one orbital. 
how many electrons fit in that first orbital? Only two. So it only needs two valence electrons for a full outer shell. So why is it in group eight? Oops. It naturally and neutrally has a full outer shell. If something has a full outer shell, it is stable. Therefore, it will not react with other atoms, and it is a what kind of gas? It is a stuck-up, full of itself, not going to interact with anybody else, noble gas. All right, so helium's like the one exception to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons group pattern, and it's because having a full outer electron trumps the fact that it has two valence electrons. And of course, we'll talk about why in the next couple lessons. So full outer shell, normally eight, but because helium is so tiny, it only has one orbital, only two fit, it still belongs in the noble gases. Which group has seven valence electrons? So again, seven electrons in the outermost orbital would be group seven or the halogens. So write down halogens equals group seven. So you should know that group eight is called the noble gases, group seven is called the halogens. So how many more electrons do halogens need for a full outer shell? How many total in a full outer shell? Eight, and it has seven. So how many more electrons does it need? One more. Example, fluorine starts with seven protons. Oh, that's not right. How many protons does fluorine start with? Nine. How do I know it started with nine? Because the atomic number is nine. The atomic number of fluorine is nine, so it has nine total protons and nine total electrons. Although seven of those electrons are called what kind of electrons? The outermost seven are called valence electrons. So it starts out with nine protons, nine electrons, so it's neutral. But with a full outer shell to be stable, Fluorine has nine protons and how many total electrons to get a full outer shell? One more for a total of 10 electrons. So let's look at the charge. We have nine protons. Each one is positive one. So we end up with a total of nine for a charge. We have 10 electrons. Each electron is negative one. So we have negative 10 charges, or 10 negatives. If we put that together, 9 minus 10 equals how much? Negative 1. Therefore, we would say that fluorine with a full outer shell has a charge of negative 1. Let's add that in there. So with a full outer shell, in order to be what? Stable, fluorine has a negative one charge. That brings us to two new vocabulary words. The first one is ion. An ion is any atom with any charge, so an atom with a charge. An anion is a negative ion, so an atom specifically with a negative charge. And I always find this to be a really, really easy word to remember as long as you remember that an ion has a charge, it's easy to remember that it's negative, because look at that, it's a negative, an ion, a negative ion. The word is right in the definition. How often does that happen? Not often enough, right? So an ion is any atom with a charge, and an ion is a negative ion. Make sure you have those two words added to your notes. And I would also add this example. It's a good example to have down. All right, hit pause till you're ready. All right, let's look at another group. Which group on the periodic table has six valence electrons? Remember, groups go up and down, and that would be group six. So group one, two, three, four, five, six. How many more electrons do elements in group six need for a full outer shell? Well, they have six valence or outermost. They need a total of eight, so they need two more electrons. What will the charge be? You might know it. If not, 
Use oxygen as an example. It starts with how many protons and how many electrons? Eight of each. It ends, and we say it ends when it is stable and has a full what? Outer shell. With how many protons and how many electrons to make that possible? Eight protons and ten electrons. The number of protons always stays the same. Just the electrons are changing. Because if we change the number of protons, we change the element. All right, so now we have eight protons, ten electrons. What is the charge? Eight minus ten equals negative two. I like to think of electrons as being bad because they're negative. No, they're really not. But if you think of them as being bad and negative, the more negative you have, the more negative you are. Or think about it like owing money. If you owe somebody money, the more debt you have, the more in the hole you are, the more negative it is. Therefore, all elements in group six will become what? What kind of ions? They're all going to be negative, so we're going to call them with a what kind of charge, what number charge will all of these in group six have? And so I'm talking oxygen, sulfur, and all the ones below it. They'll have what charge? When they have a blank, 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 which they want in order to be stable. So therefore, all groups, all elements in group six will become anions with a negative two charge when they have a full outer shell, which they want in order to be stable. In case you haven't noticed, this sentence is important, very important for like the next couple months in chemistry. It's the whole reason why chemical reactions occur. To have a negative charge, an atom must what electrons? Does it gain or lose electrons? Well, if I want to be more negative, I need more electrons because they're negative, and therefore, to have a negative charge, an atom must gain electrons. So. Write down any of all of this that you need to, especially this sentence. People seem to get tripped up on that. All right. So, do you think you know this? Prove it to me. Hit pause and fill in all the blanks on your own. Okay? Do that right now. All right, let's go over the answer. Which group has five valence or outer electrons? Group five. How many more electrons do they need for an outer shell? For a full outer shell, they need three more because a full outer shell will always have a total of eight unless it's hydrogen or helium because they're so tiny. What will the charge be? Well, let's use nitrogen as an example. Yeah, you might have used phosphorus or a different one, but I'm going to use nitrogen because you can see it on my slide. Nitrogen starts with seven protons and seven electrons, because they always start as neutral. It ends with seven protons. That never changes, but it's going to end with a total of 10 electrons. What will the charge be? Seven protons minus 10 electrons equals negative three. Therefore, all elements in group five will become anions, a negative ion, an ion meaning an atom with a charge, Specifically, it has a negative charge because it's an anion when they have a full outer shell, which they want in order to be stable. To have a negative charge, an atom must gain electrons. We will look at the rest of the periodic table in the next lesson. Okay, so I know it's a short video, but I brought up a lot of important things. I brought up charges, anions, ions, halogens, noble gases valence electrons. So as always, make sure you do the worksheet and check your answers when you're done before you take the quiz. And also, as always, if you have questions, please let me know.